There's a guy they call the little green scrub. He's not very big, about the size of a twig. But that's a jolly green giant start up. You know what the green giant told me? Sprouty said, to learn about my niblet's brown corn, just let me an ear. Oh, ho, ho. Then he showed me niblet's corn is extra tall kernels, grown from special seed. And gosh, did you know that ordinary cans of corn are packed with lots of water? But the giant vacuum packs niblet's corn with just a little water, so it stays crisp and sweet. Folks say niblet's corn tastes just like corn on the cob, without the cob. And even us little sprouts love corn on the cob. So try the Green Giant Sniblet's corn, because it's super delicious. Sprout summer. In the valley of the jolly, ho, 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 Green Giant. No Life Insurance Company. Buzz Buzzard Insurance Broker. Income taxes evaded, traffic tickets fixed. Oh boy, what a cheat. He's open for business. The Whistler. never knows when a little accident might prove fatal, does one? Hmm? What you need is insurance. Now here's one of our blanket policies. It covers you completely. But maybe you would prefer this arsenic and old lace policy. It pays double in case of, shall we say, accidental death? Hmm? In case of accidental death of Woody Woodpecker, his beneficiary, Buzz Buzzard, will receive the sum of $10,000. Hey! If you think you're going to bump me off and collect $10,000, Thank <laughs> you. 
Shot an arrow into the air. Here comes the chief, the chief, here comes the chief. Here comes the chief, the chief, here comes the chief. Indians around here. Indians? <laughs> Boy, there ain't been any Indians in these parts for 20 years. I don't think. Indians! 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 
shot an arrow into the air, and where it fell. an arrow into the air and where it fell I do not care. Flavored tang. Golly, the grape flavor's gone too. Listen, why don't I go to the earth and get some more? Yeah. I could trade them some rocks. Rocks? For an instant breakfast drink with more vitamin C than orange juice? Sure. <laughs> I'll be right back. What is vitamin C anyway? Mm. Well, I'm back. He got both orange and grape flavored tang. For a bag of rocks. Uh huh. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if there's intelligent life on that planet. The jungle. George of the jungle. Who faces danger with a smile? George of the jungle. Who put the croc in crocodile? George of the jungle. Who makes the tiger cringe and crawl by uttering his mighty call? <laughs> it's the greatest swinger of them all. Oh! George! It's a well-known fact that all African elephants trumpet. <coughs> it's a lesser-known fact that they all trumpet in the same key, F sharp. <coughs> it's a very little-known fact that there's only one elephant in the world that trumpets in a different key, E flat. <coughs> and that E flat elephant is the personal property of... George of the Jungle. Up, Shep. Sit. Good dog. George. Oh, hi, fella. For the last time, I am not a fella, and that isn't a dog. It's an elephant. Me, George. You, Jane. Shep, puppy. Big, gray, peanut-loving puppy. What makes you think so? Speak, Shep. <laughs> Jane here, E-flat. All elephants have sharp. Roll over, Shep. No, no, Shep. Oh, the way. That's him, Rosie. E flat. The only one in the world. Oh, Charlie, he must be worth millions. Yeah. 
Just think, Rosie, if we can snatch him and sell him, we can get out of this lousy jungle and go someplace exciting to live. Like where, Charlie? Schenectady, New York. Schenectady. Oh, Charlie, let's do it. Let's. But the two renegades have been spotted by one of George's jungle friends who flew to his treehouse post-haste. Ah, ah, eek, eek, tooky, tooky. What'd he say, George? Him say, ock, ock, eek, eek, tooky, tooky. Meaning? Charlie Fowler and African Rose here to steal elephant. In that case, you'd better go and check the elephant herd. Better yet, George, go check elephant herd. How did you ever think of that? Animal instinct. George have keen sense of survival. Come. Oh, I thought you had a keen sense of survival. True, but weak sense of direction. Look there, Rosie. They left their precious pet unguarded. Not quite, for inside the treehouse, Loyal Ape was catching up on his correspondence. To his exalted majesty, the Maharaja of Ralipur. Dear Boo-Boo, I must say I disagree with your theory that pragmatic cognition presupposes. Oh, my sainted Aunt Nigugu, it's Charlie Fowler and African Rose. Just then, the evil Fowler whipped out a deadly blowgun. Charlie, dear, you're going to blow one of those cute little poison darts at him. Not on your life, Rosie. They're expensive. This is just a cheap little tranquilizer pill. Oh, Charlie, you're so resourceful. I say. Mmm. Butterscotch Milltown. <laughs> My favorite flavor. Hey, Jack, can we borrow your doggy for a while? Well, actually, that's the world's only E-flat elephant worth a king's ransom. But, <laughs> oh, I couldn't care less. Okay, Jumbo, into the truck. <coughs> Meanwhile, back at the herd... All elephants here, George, count them on fingers and toes. How many are there? Twenty-three. But just then, the jungle messenger arrived excitedly. What happened to Tookie Tookie? Tookie Tookie! Don't tell me somebody stole Chef. Jane getting pretty good at Tookie Tookie. Come. Um, you swing through the trees, George. I'll walk. George, go like wind. Well, there's the docks just up ahead, Rose. We'll soon be on our way. To Sogamuck. Not Sogamuck, Schenectady. Oh, say it again, Charlie. Not Sogamuck. Oh, you know, sometimes I think we should have stayed on that riverboat. But at that moment, who should come dashing to the rescue but... Jane? Who else? Nature Boy is still back there battling the Strangler Vines. Oh! Now what do we do? Wait for him. After all, he's the hero. She's right, Rosie. Anything you say, Charlie. So all hands took a 15-minute break, at the end of which time... <laughs> oh! George here to save faithful doggy. Hands up, George of the jungle. This is the end of the... <laughs> Vine. Oh, Charlie, that's very amusing. Yeah, well, I had 15 minutes to think it up. What will you do now, George? No fear, Jane. George now call lions. Lions come and save Shep. <laughs> but you gave the cry of the woodpecker, George. Well, somebody come. No look gift woodpecker in mouth. Sure enough, within seconds, the busy woodpeckers had picked the cage to sawdust and freed Shep. But not you, you jungle jerk. Roll over, Shep. Other way, Shep. <laughs> George of the jungle had triumphed again. <laughs> Charlie, did you hear that? What was it? F. Sharp. F sharp? Well, that means that elephant's voice is changing. Oh, George, we're losing our baby. 
Well, you can have him, George. He's just like any other elephant now. Not elephant. Shep, good doggy. Him come when I call. <whistles> him sit up. Him roll over. Out of the way, Shep! Out of the way! Chicken, champion of the weak, protector of the poor, uplifter of the downtrodden. Super Chicken, as you know, is in reality wealthy, mild-mannered play chicken hunt Strongbird Jr., who, when disguised as Super Chicken, is the greatest swashbuckler of the age. Faster than a speeding pullet. Able to leap tall chicken coops in a single bound. More powerful than the 515 out of Dallas. It's Super Chicken. Living example of his motto, The weak shall protect the strong. Our story starts today on the world's largest chicken ranch. Owned and operated by chicken tycoon, Eggs Benedict. Eggs Benedict ate with the chickens. He slept with the chickens. Day after day, he was never out of reach of those chickens. Then one afternoon, it happened. Eggs Benedict got chicken fatigue. <laughs> Eggs had turned anti-chicken, and he made no bones about it. And of course, in his mad scheme to get even with all chicken kind, his thoughts turned to the head chicken. And so in the penthouse apartment of wealthy play chicken, Hunt Strongbird Jr. Hello. Hello, Super Chicken. Super Chicken, just a moment, please. Hello. This is Eggs Benedict, and I'm out to get you. This is your last warning. Hmm. This looks like a job for Super Chicken. Uh, Super Chicken. What is it, Fred? Uh... You just locked yourself in the bathroom. Oh, fiddle faddle. Meanwhile, Eggs Benedict, having devised a perfect plan to get Super Chicken, went to the bank on business. Can you loan me $2 million till Friday? No. In that case, this is a stick-up. But Super Chicken's super brain had warned him this might happen, and... Drop that gun, you rogue. I have you apprehended. <laughs> Eggs was sentenced to 10 years in the state pen, but he didn't mind. It was all part of his plan. Sort of a sacrifice play. When the 10 years were up, Eggs put part two of his plan into effect. This time, he was smuggling dogs into the country. Okay, this is it. Everybody out. But Super Chicken, a master of disguise, caught him red-handed. Dog smuggling has been against the law since 1928, fella. <laughs> Eggs got another 15 years. His plan was working beautifully. For due to the fact that he was able to capture Eggs so easily, Super Chicken began to develop a super ego. Hunt, in reality, Super Chicken, you are the greatest. <laughs> super Chicken baby, I love you. So when Eggs was released again, he began to put the final phase of his plan into effect. Hello? This is Eggs Benedict, and I'm going to rob the United States Mint. Goodbye. That is definitely illegal. This looks like a job for Super Chicken. Close your eyes, Fred. Okay. <laughs> super Chicken! Where's Hunt? No time to explain now. Charge! <laughs> Racing across Arizona, Wisconsin, and South Carolina, Super Chicken made it to the Denver Mint just in time. So, you caught me again, Super Chicken. I did? Here, you hold the money. I'll get the cop. Now, what's all this about somebody robbing the Mint? It's true, officer. Who did it? He did. The trap was sprung, and it looked bad for the overconfident chicken. His only chance was to throw his super brain into high gear. 
And in less than ten minutes, he had the answer. Wait. I am innocent, and I can prove it. Close your eyes. Oh. Why, it's wealthy play chicken, Hunt Strongbird Jr. Right. And I own the mint. How can I be guilty of stealing what's mine to begin with? Yep, you're innocent, all right. Wait a minute. What happened to Super Chicken? No time to explain now. Officer, arrest that man for false arrest. Eggs Benedict was found guilty and sent back to prison. But I'll be out of here in 99 years, and then I'll spend the rest of my life getting Super Chicken. But till that day, the mighty chicken is free as a bird to carry on his fight against evil. So when you hear that cry in the sky, you'll know it's Super Chicken. <laughs> The British are coming, the British are coming. Now the ride of Paul Revere set the nation on its ear. And the shot at Lexington heard round the world. When the British fired in the early dawn, the war of independence had begun. The die was cast, the rebel flag unfurled. And on to Concord marched the foe to seize the arsenal, there you know. Waking folks, searching all around Till our militia stopped them in their tracks At the old North Bridge, we turned them back And chased those red coats back to Boston town And the shot heard around the world Was the start of the revolution The men and men were ready on the move Take your power, take your gun Report to General Washington Hurry men, there's not an hour to lose at famous Bunker Hill Even though we lost it was quite a thrill The rebel Colonel Prescott proved he was wise Outnumbered and low on ammunition As the British stormed his position He said, hold your fire till you see the whites of their eyes Though the next few years were rough General Washington's men proved they were tough Those hungry ragged boys would not be beat one night they crossed the Delaware, surprised the Hessians in their lair, and at Valley Force they just bundled up their feet. Now the shot heard round the world was the start of the revolution. The men and men were ready on the moon. Take your blanket, take your son, report to General Washington. We've got our rights and now it's time to prove. They showed such determination That they won the admiration Of countries across the sea Like France and Spain Who loaned the colony Ships and guns And put the British on the run And the Continental Army On its feet again And though they lost some battles too The Americans swore they see it through Their raiding parties Shipped up, hit and run At Yorktown the British could not retreat up by Washington and the French fleet Cornwallis surrendered and finally we had one when I the shot heard around the world to the end of the revolution the continental rebel was the day and the father of our country beat the British there in Yorktown and brought freedom to you and me and the USA God bless America this stuff. Some cereal. It's supposed to be good for you. Did you try it? I'm not going to try it. You try it. I'm not going to try it. Let's get Mikey. Yeah. He won't need it. He hates everything. He likes it. Hey, Mikey. When you bring life home, don't tell the kids it's one of those nutritional cereals you've been trying to get them to eat. You're the only one who has to know. With me. 
This is Bill Cosby coming at you with music and fun. And if you're not careful, you may learn something before it's done. to admit old Rudy tried to sneak one by them. Let's see if he can do it again. Oops. Hello? Who's that? Wonder who that is? I never saw him before, man. Where'd he come from? Way to go, man! Strike him out! Wheeler, Wheeler, this is Spanish Hat. Come on in, Wheeler. This is Wheeler. How you doing, Hat? Just fine, just fine. Say, uh, I'm gonna be up in your part of the state next week. Uh, maybe I'll drop in on you. After two years on the radio, it's high time we meet in person. Um, uh, I'd like to, Hat, but we just moved into the neighborhood, and I'm pretty busy getting to know my way around. Maybe we can do it another time. Hey, should we yeah. go over and talk to him? Yeah, I don't know. What do you say? Man, you don't know. Well, it's time for the Brown Hornet. I'll go see if he wants to watch with us. We're going down to our clubhouse and watch the Brown Hornet. You want to come with us? No, I don't think so. I better get home and help my folks and pack. Well, maybe another time. Maybe. Says he can't come. Says he's got to help his folks. I had the feeling he just didn't want to come. Maybe I said something wrong. Looks like the kids don't quite know how to handle the newcomer. They want to be friendly and make him feel welcome, but they don't know what they should or shouldn't say about his being in a wheelchair. We'll see what happens later. But now, let's see what the Brown Hornet's up to. It's the Brown Hornet! As we rejoin the Brown Hornet, he and his friends are coming in for a refueling stop on the little known planet of Podunkia. Yeah, what did that? Did them space sodas sure hit the spot? We should take a few extra with us. Good idea, Tweeterbell. Mr. Hornet, you got yourself a problem. Your thruster unit's completely shot. You need a replacement. Do you have one for sale? We'll have to check in the junkyard. It's around back. <laughs> Wow, look at that! Yeah. What is look that? that is? Uh, I think he wants your soda. Adam, get his own! Who or what is that? Herbie, he's a pedidexter. The herds of them on this here planet. 
I keep around as a sort of fat dish by the watch. You want this? <laughs> All right, you know what to do. <laughs> I wouldn't give him any more, you'll spoil him. Let's go check for that thruster unit. that sometimes just tears off. Yeah. You sure got a nutty looking dog, mister. Dog? I don't have a dog. Moves! Yay! Is there any way out of this? Those moons eat anything they can catch. I sure wish Herbie hadn't taken off. Pedidexter's about the only creatures on the planet that can handle moves. You must be kidding. They don't even have arms to fight with. Tweeter, do you still have those extra space sodas? <laughs> Quickly, we must start uncapping. That's the last soda. I sure hope Herbie heard. Look, he did. He's cut the moves off from us. I never seen anyone dig like that. But no! They're after him! Don't worry about Herbie. <laughs> hmm, did you see that? And I thought he couldn't do anything against them moves. It just goes to show you that some people can do a lot more than you think they can. I wish we could have taken Harvey with us. He sure helped us when we needed it. Uh, speaking of help, there's something fishy going on out there. It's a school of flying space flounders. They're coming right at us. Will our daring heroes survive their latest dangerous threat? If so, how? Tune in next time for another exciting episode of The Brown Hornet! Oh, oh man! Man, how the Brown Hornet! Man, I don't Get see this! Mm -hmm. How about that, Herbie? I mean, he might not have any arms, but he sure gave the Brown Hornet a hand. It's like the Hornet said, you'd be surprised what some people are able to do, especially when they seem a little different. And that's a good thing to remember, so why don't you think about it? See you soon. And we'll find out what's happening with Wheeler. class member this morning. His name is Chewy Reyes and he's just moved into the neighborhood. I know you'll welcome him warmly and give him any help you can. Yes, Chewy, is there something you wish to say to the class? Just call me Wheeler and I won't be needing any help. Breaker, breaker. Come in, Wheeler. Thank you for sharing that with us, Chewy. We'll all keep it in mind. I'll ask you to help us by not using your radio in class. 
Well, now Old Wheel is kind of independent, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Probably a little upset because people are always staring at him, and I can understand that, can't you? Well, class is over now. Let's see what's happening. What do we do? Hey, 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 let's ask him to play. Ask him to play? Are you kidding? He's in a wheelchair. Well, I'm going to ask him. We can practice for the game some other time. You want to play with us for a while? We were just practicing for our game with the Tigers next week, but we can do that tomorrow. Nah, you go ahead with your practice. Looks like you need it. lucky that's all I don't know look to me as if he knew what he was doing I wonder how Wheeler manages to get around turns without crashing I'd ask him if he were a little more friendly he doesn't want to be friends how many times have you tried to talk to him already fat Albert I'm not counting, but I'm going to keep right on trying. Well, here's your chance! Huh? Hi, Wheeler. Come on in! We're playing checkers, and Rudy's just about to lose! Come on in. I don't think I can get up those steps. We'll give you all the help you need. If I need any help, I'll ask for it. And so far, I haven't needed any. The one thing you've got to say about Fat Albert, he doesn't discourage easily. A lot of people would say, okay, Wheeler, you don't want to be friendly, then neither do I. But our friend Fat Albert has a tenacious streak in him. Tenacious. You know what that means? It's a good word, and, and it's a good thing to be. It means holding on, sticking to it. In other words, not giving up. Kind of like me and throwing this basketball. I mean, I am going to be tenacious. And if you'll excuse me, I think I'd like to practice this alone. I'll see you in a minute. We gotta get some practices in if we're gonna beat those Tigers next week. They're really good. Well, we won't get any practice today. Miss Wilkins having tryouts for the track team. I'm going out for the team. Track is my best sport. Huh. We'll see about that. I'm going out for the team, too. You ready? Come on, I'll drive you to school. What's the matter? Not working out the way you thought it would? Got some more problems you hadn't planned on? Sort of. The kids are all friendly, but they treat me different. Always trying to help me do things I can do for myself. You are different to them, Chewie. It's not like the other school where everyone had a handicap of one sort or another. You want to change your mind and transfer back? No, I'm going to stick it out. I've got to be able to make it in the world the way it is. Not the way I want it to be. Kind of looks like the kids and Wheeler want the same thing, but don't quite know how to go about it. Might help if they could just get together and talk about it. Let's see what happens. What kind of athletic program did you guys have at your other school, Wheeler? What were your favorite events? Track and basketball, mainly. Track and basketball? Were they set up the same way as ours are? <laughs> well, we didn't have pole vaulting and high hurdles in our track program. 
How about the running events? How did you manage them? Same as anybody else. Wheelchair times are almost as good as regular times. Sometimes, at least. All right, boys and girls, time for the track team tryouts. Miss Walker, did you know that Will, I mean, Chewy, was on the track team at his other school? No, I didn't know that. He told me so himself. All right, who wants to try out for the 100-yard dash? I'll try out for it. Me, too. There's no way you can beat me. Okay, we have two people for the dash. Anybody else? How about you, Chewy? Wheeler? Is Miss Wooker kidding? Well, I don't know. I guess, maybe. All right, then that's settled. Now get on your marks and take off when you hear the whistle. I can't believe I saw what I just saw. What else can he do? I play a little basketball. Basketball? How little? I was the captain of our team. Maybe you could come to our practice and show us a few moves. We need all the help we can get. We're playing the Tigers in a few days, and they're good. Really good. Now, well, Fat Albert's discovery that Wheeler was a member of the track team at the other school smoothed the path nicely. Can't get over that Wheeler. Hmm. Maybe I can get him to show me how to balance a basketball on my finger. But I'm still tenacious. <laughs> I bet he won't show up. Sure he will. He said he would. I still don't think he can play basketball. You didn't think he could outwill you in the race, either. There he is now. I told you he'd show up here. Come on in. Can't. Why not? Can't get up the steps. Think you could use a little help? I thought you'd never ask. Were you kidding when you told us that you could play basketball? No, I really can. There have to be a few minor rule changes, though. Oh, oh sure! sure. Yeah. Tell us what they are! What are they? We can find out when we get to the playground. Come on, we'll take a shortcut through the park. Tell us about the rule changes. Not too many, really. I need someone to stand in for me on the jump-offs and no penalties for traveling. Is that all? Yeah, I guess that's about it. Hey, 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 let's get on the way. Wheeler, you can be on Rudy's team. He needs all the help he can get. Nice move, Bill. Wheeler's open. Watch his hook shot.
Well, if I didn't see all that with my eyes, I wouldn't believe it. Is there anything at all you need help with? Yeah, there is something you can do for me. What's that? Build a ramp up those clubhouse steps so I can come inside and watch TV with you guys. Would this afternoon be too soon? Wheeler, Wheeler, this is Spanish Hat. Come on in, Wheeler. This is Wheeler, Hat. This is Wheeler. Can't talk with you right now. I'm busy with some new friends. Stand far on that, Wheeler, and I'm still looking forward to meeting you. Me too, Hat. Anytime you say. Talk to you later. I guess sooner or later everybody needs a little help, but sometimes too much is worse than none at all. And by the way, did I show you what Wheeler taught me? Hmm? It's not too bad, not too good, but I'll see you next time, and it may be better, because I'm tenacious. Still have the fingers. back till he grows up. <laughs> Good morning. I don't get to spend much time with my grandchildren, so when we get together, we start early. Grandpa, I'm hungry. But we haven't caught our breakfast yet. Oh, Grandpa, we know you brought Dave that cereal. Okay, let's eat. <laughs> They're learning. Grape nuts is a no-nonsense natural cereal made from hearty wheat and barley and fortified with vitamins. Here, Grandpa. But what I really like is the way grape nuts feels in my mouth. Good and crunchy. That's because it's oven baked, then toasted for crunchiness. It's the only cereal I know that is. The baking gives it a nutty taste, a slightly sweet taste. No artificial flavorings or preservatives. Grape nut cereal, the crunchy cereal with the nutty taste. Okay, let's catch lunch. I'm an ant eater, and wherever there's a picnic, sooner or later an ant is going to show up. I'll just stick around. Ah, something small approaches. Hold it! Hey, what's this? I don't believe it. They got motorcycles for ants. Well, you know how it is. With transistors, they can miniaturize anything these days. Well, it won't do you any good, Ant, because I'm having you for lunch. That's what you think, pal. So it shouldn't be a total loss. I'll get him on the return trip. Man, I never saw so much delicious food. Boy, this French bread show makes a great peanut butter sandwich. Uh-huh. Here he comes. You know, peanut butter really sticks to the roof of your back. This time I'll give him a good snack. Then I'll have a snack. Wasting your time, pal. 
Wasting my time, am I? Well, we'll just see about that. I can't fail this time. He's got to come this way. Anybody know a good tailor? I think I need a new tail. Why go to a lot of work to catch an ant when I can use instant hope? The latest scientific discovery. Fooly with science. It doesn't work. I'll have to run him down. I was wrong. Instant hold does work. It works rotten. Just goes to show you what you can get these days on a credit card. All right, wise guy. You met your match. You press down on the starter and... That sales didn't explain to me about revise. He ought to be along any minute. Aha! Right on schedule! You instant hole. By golly, I believe he wants to drag. Okay, buddy, let's go. Started out to be a picnic. And here is G.I. Joe with Kung Fu Grip. G.I. Joe has hands that grip, fingers you hold open and let close. Hands that hold on with a Kung Fu grip. The grip you help Joe use in self-defense. G.I. Joe with Kung Fu grip. The hands that grip.
upon a time there was a young prince who ventured into the woods in search of game. Somehow, during the course of the day, he became lost, for he found himself in a part of the forest where he had never been before. He was tired and hungry, and it was growing very late. Just then, he saw a light, and there, a short distance away, stood a great castle. Rushing up the path, he knocked on the huge door. If you're selling weird story magazines, we don't want any. Go away! Wait, wait. I am a handsome prince who has lost his way. Could you spare a 32-course feast in a master bedroom for the night? A prince? Well, in that case, come in. You're just in time for dinner. Taking the lad by the hand, the king led him inside. When they entered the main dining room, the prince was shocked at what he saw. There, there were seven chickens sitting around the table. And they, along with the king, proceeded to peck away at the dishes of corn that sat before them. Eat, boy, eat. What's the matter? You haven't pecked a thing on your plate. I'm suddenly not hungry. Oh, that's too bad. Now, what's that, Florence? <laughs> this is very funny. What happened? Florence just told a joke. Hmm, that's all. Son, I'm glad you came along. I've got a problem. Yes, I noticed that. The king went on to tell the prince an incredible tale of how a witch had come to his castle one dark day and cast an evil spell that had turned all his loving daughters into chickens. Oh, so that's it. Those chicken seven are your daughters. No, no, six of the chickens are my daughters. The seventh one is the witch herself. And here comes the plot. Right you are. The spell on my daughters cannot be broken until I can discover which of the seven chickens is the witch. Well, now, this is the sort of thing that all handsome princes wait for. The next morning, he got up with the chickens and set about his task. It's no use, my boy. Chickens have a nasty habit of looking just alike. That's true, but they don't think alike. The one that's the witch thinks like a witch. With a plan in mind, the prince soon had disguised himself as a beautiful maiden. Your mascara is running, and what's the plan? Simple. I pretend like I'm Snow White. There isn't a witch in the world that can resist a setup like that. Watch this. Lining up the seven chickens, the prince, in his Snow White suit, ran through the courtyard, proclaiming to the top of his voice, I am Snow White. I do so hope that any witch around here that is disguised as a chicken won't give me a poison apple. None of the seven chickens paid the slightest bit of attention. But an ogre that happened to be casing the castle did. He saw that this was a chance to cop what he thought was a fair maiden, which he wasted no time in doing. But just then, a handsome knight chanced to arrive on the scene and rushed to the rescue. Never fear, fair beauty! I shall save you! With that, the knight flew at the ogre. The prince was saved and his troubles were over. Almost. Ah, oh, fair maiden, you are truly lovely. I know, but knock it off, knight. I'm not a maiden. Your eyes, your lips, your... Okay, you ask for it. Ah, uh -huh, the lady has fire. Wait, dear one, wait, come back. Prince was not used to running with the dress on, but he did manage to make it back to the castle well ahead of the pursuing knight. What happened? Never mind. Help me out of this fair maiden disguise before anything else happens. But before they could do this, the seven chickens came plucking into the courtyard and gathered round the prince to see what the commotion was. <laughs> Girls, girls, not now. Go away. The prince grabbed a broom and started swinging to shoo them away. All chickens being afraid of brooms, they scattered like, uh, well, chickens. That is all but one. That chicken snatched the broom from the prince, hopped on, and flew it around and around. Your Highness, look at that. Must say, I never saw a chicken do that before. Of course not. Only witches fly brooms, so that's the chicken that is a witch. The prince had guessed the secret and the spell was broken. Not only did the witch turn back into a witch, but the six chickens were turned back into the king's beautiful daughter. Party pooper! My boy, you did it. As a reward, I'm going to give you a chest of gold and any daughter you wish to be your bride. Heavens, it's going to be hard to choose. They're all so beautiful. Unfortunately, however, before he could make up his mind, the knight, who still thought the prince was a fair maiden, galloped in and swept him off his feet. Now, lovely one, you and I, we fly away together, up, up and away! Well, now, needless to say, the poor prince did not get the chest of gold, and he was never to get one of the beautiful daughters to be his bride. Of course, his mother had told him that there would be days like that, but she had forgotten to warn him about the nights.
are going. We're not. We are going. We're not. Why not? I just washed my hair and I can't do a thing with it. Now you can do a thing with your hair. New Twice as Nice Shampoo from Lever Brothers. It's shampoo and conditioner in one. Look, we washed half this girl's hair with plain shampoo. The other half with Twice as Nice. Plain shampoo can leave it snarly, hard to comb, not twice as nice. Plain shampoo can leave it frizzy, hard to manage, not twice as nice. I just washed my hair, and I can do a thing with it. New twice as nice, shampoo and conditioner in one. in an open sky, a streak of gray, and a cheerful... Ah! A loop, a whirl, and a vertical climb, and once again, you'll know it's time for the adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle and friends. Starring that supersonic speedster, Rocket J. Squirrel, with his pal, Bullwinkle the Moose, and a host of others. I'm coming as fast as I can. Wave to the people. Yay! Now what are you doing? Sign an autograph. The Steve John Smith. But your name is Bullwinkle. I know, but that's hard to spell. We're going to have a lot of fun. Come on and join us. Sure, there's always room for one more. Captain Harvey Blood and Viscera Lincolnfurter certainly knew what he was talking about when he cried, War is heck! For moments later, he was blown to smithereens while making a run for it during the Battle of San Juan Capistrano. <laughs> Captain Lincolnfurter was a hero. We can't all be heroes, but it's perfectly legal to have a hero. What have you got there, Rook? It's my Bullwinkle scrapbook, Bullwinkle. In here, I keep a record of your heroic feats. Come on now, Rocky. My feats aren't heroic. Big, maybe, but not heroic. Just the same, you're my hero, Bullwinkle. Don't you have a hero? Well, I'm only human, of course I do. Who is it? Same one as you, me. That may seem silly, but as Bullwinkle just said, it's only human to have a hero. That's right. Here I am only part human, and even I got hero. Boris, why are you all the time playing with your finger scar nose doll? I just told you, he's my hero. I don't got no namby pamby hero like Squirrel. I got real crummy, rotten, evil, unclean stinker, public enemy number one for hero. Oh, he's nice to have somebody you can look up to, darling. Skarnos has been my hero since the time he turned his own mother in for the reward. Yes, it figures that Boris Badenov would choose Finger Skarnos as his hero. For even as a baby, Skarnos had strong bad guy tendencies. Let's look at the record. Finger Skarnos was born just below the Lower East Side in a section called Hex Kitchen. And when Skarnos was only six weeks old... I'm telling you, Mama, the kid is a bad seed. He's a fink clear through. What kid's that, Papa? Ah, oh, kid, fingers, that's who. How can you say such things, Papa? The kid is only six weeks old. It's easy to say things like that. I just went in to kiss him goodnight and he tried to roll me. That was only the beginning. As Scarnos grew older, he took the stealing hubcaps with the cars still stuck to them. At the age of four, he hijacked a diaper truck, but they couldn't pin a thing on him. He learned to lie, cheat, steal, and make zip guns. And then one day, Skarnos fell in with a bad crowd. Go on, go on, tell him how he graduated from reform school at the head of his class. He graduated from reform school at the head of his class. That's right, he was magna cum lousy. As everybody knew he would, Finger Skarnos grew from early hoodlumhood into full-grown gangsterhood. Today, he is a mature punk, Mr. Crime himself, kingpin of the underworld. And he is my very own hero. 
Please don't get so excited, darling. I want to be just like Skadnos when I grow up. You are grown up, Boris. Now quiet and listen. In a recent report at a fact-finding committee, Claire Luce Booth stated that... It's been common knowledge for years that Finger Skarnos is a dastardly criminal. Why hasn't he been flung into prison? Yes, why? Perhaps the DA can answer that. We can't get anything on them. You know, handcuffs, leg irons, things like that. Why not? We've never been able to get anybody to testify against him. You mean there's never been a witness against Finger Scarnos? Oh, yes. The East River's full of them. No, oh, then our hands are tied. So were the witnesses. Does this mean that Finger Scarnos will go on and on making millions through his criminal activities? Will there never be a witness brave enough or stupid enough to testify against Finger Scarnos? Be sure to learn the spine-chilling answer to that in our next episode entitled Bullwinkle Sneaks a Peak or There's Room in the River. If you should put them side by side, you would quickly see that there is a vast difference between Rocket J. Squirrel and Boris Badenov. Of course, there is a big difference. Squirrel has blue eyes. But the biggest difference is that Rocky, being true of heart, looks up to Bullwinkle as his hero. That's right. Because I am trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and stupid. Bullwinkle is also full of integrity. I am not. I always tell the truth. Boris, on the other hand, looks up to the most successful and dastardly <laughs> criminal in the country as his Hero, fingers, Scarnos. Right, because Scarnos is untrustworthy, disloyal, not helpful, unfriendly, rude, unkind, bad boy, sarpus, crooked, cowardly, dirty, and would sell his own mother for a nickel. Finger Scarnos operates right out in the open. He and his criminal activities have been going on for years. And so far, the law has been unable to do anything about it. If I only had a witness to testify against Scarnos, he'd go up the river for 40, 50, maybe 60 days. Chief? We've got a witness. At last. Send him in immediately. Impossible. How come? We can't get the cement off his feet. Can this go on forever? You bet your blue booties it will. Nobody will ever put the finger on fingers. Is there no one who will testify against this blight on the nose of society? Is there not a hero who will step forward and bravely say, I will do it. You'll do what? I will go down to the store and pick up a bag of onions. What for? For this peanut butter pound cake I'm baking. The only way I can get it to weigh a pound is to put onions in it. Okay, but don't be gone too long, Bullwinkle. And with no further fooling around, Bullwinkle hurried out of the house and down the street toward the onion store. At the very same instant, Boris and Natasha hurried out of their hideout and ambled along until they finally came to rest in front of the big house on 92nd Street. Here we are, honey bun. This is the house of my hero, Scarnos. Some class, eh? Yes, darling, but why are we here? To get autograph. What else? And look, Natasha, a little something I bet you didn't know I got. What is it, sweetie? Yeast mold? No, it's lack of hair from Scarnos. Hmm. He's still using that greasy kid stuff. By that time, it was 1.30, the exact time that Scarnos, surrounded by his trusted Finks, always left the house to pull a job. It was then that a sickening turn of events took place. The big black getaway car pulled up in front of the local bank... <coughs> And Scarnos and his mob dashed inside to hold it up. The sickening part is that Bullwinkle's destination, the onion shop, was right next to the bank. Do, 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 do. The onion-seeking moose went into the onion shop and immediately came out carrying a bag of onions. For as we all know, it doesn't take long to pick up a bag of onions. Bullwinkle found himself directly in front of the bank just as the holdup went into full swing. Boy, the mosquitoes are out early this year. I had better take a cab, or I'll be a mass of angry red welts by the time I get home. Mistaking the getaway car for a taxi, the confused moose got inside, followed closely by Scarnos and his getaway-minded mob. Calling all cars, calling all cars. Scarnos did it again. Never mind trying to get the money back. Just find a witness. Watch for a black getaway car with a moose inside. It is believed the moose is a witness. Hokey smoke a moose? There's only one moose I know of around here, and that's Bullwinkle. Will Scarnos and his thugs notice that a moose is in the car with them? Will they realize that Bullwinkle is a witness? Don't let anything keep you from our next episode entitled mm -hmm. The Half-Shot Moose or Testify My Eye. No one can ever say that our last episode was a total loss, for as you remember, we learned beyond a doubt that Bullwinkle really takes the cake when it comes to baking a cake. What do you mean, worthy onions? I thought you were baking a cake, Bullwinkle. Well, pity sakes, I am. The mess here in the kitchen should tell you that. You put onions in a cake. Doesn't everybody? No, and we're out of onions.
Holmes. You used the last one on your cornflakes this morning. Darn. Now I will have to trot down to the onion store and get some. I wish Bullwinkle would stop eating so many onions. They might hurt his stomach. Indeed, they might hurt the moose's stomach. In fact, going after those onions might hurt the entire moose to the extent that he is killed dead. For when Bullwinkle left the onion shop with a bag of Bermudas, he passed directly in front of the bank, which at the time was being severely robbed by none other than the notorious Finger Scarnos. Good heavens! I wonder why there are so many mosquitoes here in front of the bank. I will avoid their little stingers by taking a cab home. Mistaking the getaway car in front of the bank for a taxi, Bullwinkle got inside, followed closely by Finger Scarnos and his getaway-minded mob. Calling all cars, Finger Scarnos just robbed the bank again. Be on the lookout for a getaway car with a confused moose in it. A getaway car with a confused what in it? Confused moose in it, that is all. Gee, that's got to be Bullwinkle and he's in trouble. I gotta save him. With that, the plucky squirrel shot into the air to search the city in hopes of finding Bullwinkle in time. But time was rapidly running out, for in the speeding getaway car below... My, look at all of that money. What did you fellas do, rob a bank or something? <laughs> oh, a witness, eh? Let them have it, boys. In an instant, every gun in the gangster-infested car was being pointed at Bullwinkle and his bag of onions. Fortunately, it is difficult to hit even something big as a moose while riding in a speeding getaway car. But though Bullwinkle was left unpunctured, his bag of onions was shot to pieces, filling the car with onion juice. <laughs> <laughs> Just like with East Lynn, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Driving with tears in their eyes, the car spun out of control. At the corner of 42nd and Broadway, Bullwinkle was thrown clear and onto the pavement. Hokey smoke! A moose just fell out of that car down there! It must be Bullwinkle! Rocky zoomed to the side of his fallen friend and was a greatly relieved squirrel to find him unscratched. I may be unscratched, but I get a large bump on my antlers. That makes me a seven-pointer. Bullwinkle, do you know what happened? Well, of course I know what happened. Uh, what? You are a witness to one of Finger Scarno's crimes. I am? Yes, and now you can testify and send Scarno's to prison forever. See, that's right. But what about the overcoat? What overcoat? The cement overcoat Mr. Scarno's will put on me when he finds out. Will you let me worry about that? How comforting. At last, there is a witness against Finger Scarnos, and hot information like that is mighty hard to keep a secret. By that afternoon, every newspaper in the country carried the story. X-ray, X-ray, read all about the moose who's going to sing Scarnos into Sing Sing. Boy, I wouldn't want to be in that moose's shoes. The moose's wear shoes? Okay, so I wouldn't want to be in his hoofs. Who would? Nobody would. Anybody want to buy some moose hoofs cheap? Will Bullwinkle live long enough to be quizzed by the DA? Be with us next time for Whatever Happened to Joel Copperman or Get That Quiz Kid. Some people have all the luck. Unfortunately, however, Bullwinkle is not a people and lucky he's not. Being the only witness to a crime committed by the deadly underworld kingpin Finger Scarnos, Bullwinkle has the dangerous duty of testifying against him. The fact that the moose is going to talk has made him the talk of the town. Tell us, moose, are you really going to testify against Finger Scarnos? Well, you uh... bet he is. You know what has happened to witnesses in the past, don't you? Well, I... That won't stop Bullwinkle. Aren't you afraid? Well, I... Of course not. You're not afraid, are you, Bullwinkle? Not on your life. There's not a cowardly bone in my body. Of course, there's a lot of cowardly moose meat covering those brave bones. Yes, for the moment, there is a real live witness against Finger Scarnos. This is what the DA's office has been waiting for. Gentlemen, with the moose's testimony, we can send Scarnos and his gang to prison for 90 or 100 years. Maybe even life. Are you sure? Word has it that the moose is somewhat on the stupid side. I understand that if you ask him what his RQ is, he says 2020. That makes no difference. All we need from the moose is two things. One, that he testify. And second? That he stays alive long enough to testify. You mugs all know why we are here? Right. You all know that the moose is going to snitch on me? Right. You all know that if I go up the river, I squeal and take you guys with me? Right. All right. Then will it be a hit or a miss? A uh, hit. hit. Okay. I want that moose hit and hit hard. The hit was on. Next in the order of business was to find an out-of-town torpedo, a killer, someone to do the job. Scarnos himself placed a call to the torpedo's union. Hello? Let me talk to hands. Not there? Then let me talk to nails. Gone too, huh? How about feet? Ears? Elbows? Knees? Legs? Belly button? What the hey? Isn't anybody there? 
Why is it you can never find a torpedo when you want one? You called? Who are you? Boris Bedinov at your service. Are you a torpedo? <laughs> Am I a torpedo? <laughs> Tell him, honey bun. He is a torpedo. Can you get the moose? Uh, can I get the moose? <laughs> Tell him, Natasha. He can get the moose. See? I will kill moose until he's dead for free because you are my hero, finger scarnel, big boy. Okay, the job is yours, but you better not miss. Rest easy, boss baby. Moose is practically a memory right now. <laughs> Here we are, darling. Now what is plan to kill Moose? Doesn't witches disguise in basket apples give you a hint? Boris, you are going to pull Snow White caper on Moose. Good girl. Only I don't got old-fashioned poison apple. I got apple with bomb inside that will blow Moose to bits. Pure genius, darling. Here goes Natasha. Stand back so you don't get pieces of blown-up Moose all over you. The postman always rings twice, so that must be he. Hey, you're not the postman. You were a sweet little old ugly lady. Hello, Moose. You like to buy apple? Buy apple? Yes, I'm trying to earn enough to send my mother-in-law to summer school. Only a nickel. Wait a minute. This apple has a worm in it. That's not a worm, that's a fuse. Oh, in that case, I'll take it. Here's your nickel. Fire in the hole, oh. head for the hills. Will Bullwinkle really eat that loaded apple? Pity sakes, that's what I bought it for. Be sure to see our next episode entitled Doing the Big Apple or May I Have the Next Dance? Unfortunately, Bullwinkle is the only living moose who can testify against the notorious Finger Scarnos. But Boris Badenov has been hired to correct that. Right, to correct the part about moose living, that is. <laughs> and last time, you'll remember, it looked as though Boris was about to succeed in doing just that. He had come to the house disguised as an old witch selling apples. And this apple for moose is loaded. It's got big bomb inside. How about it, big boy? You want to buy apple for nickel? Are you sure this isn't a worm in the apple? I told you before, that's not worm, that's the fuse. Convinced that it wasn't a worm, Bullwinkle took the apple as Boris and Natasha dashed for cover in a nearby alley. Hurry, honeybun. We will hide in garbage can so that we won't get hurt by flying pieces of moose. Hey, what have you got there, Bullwinkle? An apple. Hold it, there's a worm in it. Oh, that's not a worm. The sweet little old ugly lady in the witch's disguise that sold it to me said it is a fuse. Oh, lady, fuse. Could be a worm, though. I can hear his little heart going tick, 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 tick. Hokey smoke, it's a bomb. Quick as a flash, the plucky squirrel plucked the apple away from Bullwinkle and shot out of the window. <laughs> Soaring high into the air, Rocky desperately searched for a place to get rid of the deadly explosive. Gosh, it sounds like it's getting ready to go off. I'll drop it into that garbage can in the alley where it can explode without doing any harm. Bombs away! Oh, boy. Fifty million garbage cans in city and squirrel drops bomb into ours. The odds against a thing like that must be fantastic, darling. Wasting no time, our heroes decided to throw finger scarnos off the track. They boarded a train and sped south for two hours. Then transferring to a bus, they doubled back and traveled north for an hour and a half. Leaving the bus, they paddled a canoe due east up a creek until noon. Then setting out on foot, they fought their way west through the back country. <sighs> Do you think we've lost Finger Scarnos, Bullwinkle? I don't know, but you certainly threw me off the track. Where are we? Way out in the country. I can tell that by the stickers in my socks. Let's sit down and rest. No, not yet, Bullwinkle. You gotta hide where nobody will ever think to look for you. And I know just the place. Where's that? A mink farm. A mink farm? That little squirrel really knew what he was talking about. For who would ever think to look for a moose on a mink farm? So you fellas desire to work mink, eh? Yes, sir. All right, I'll give you $40 a week and all you can eat. The $40 a week sounds fine, but I don't desire to eat any minks if it's all the same to you. Knowing that Bullwinkle would now be safe until after the trial, Rocky and Bullwinkle went to work. For the next two weeks, they mended mink pens, rounded up stray minks, mixed mink meal, and even sat up nights with a mink who had an infected ear. Everything went along smoothly until the very day Bullwinkle was to testify, when... In just a few hours, you can testify against Scar Nose and it'll be all over, Bullwinkle. Then we can... Hey, what was that? I don't know. Hokey smoke, Bullwinkle. It must be Figure Scar Nose's men. You gotta hide so they won't find you. Hide where? Get into this empty mink pen and act like a mink. Uh, what does a mink act like? Well, you should know by now. Just jump up and...
and down and squeak and look expensive. With Bo Winkle in the mink pen, acting like a mink, Rocky ran for the barn where he sought cover in a mink meal barrel just as Boris arrived on the scene. Will Bo Winkle's mink act full Boris or will the slight difference between a mink and a moose give him away? Be sure to watch next time for The Act is Over or The Big Mink is the Fink. Realizing that Boris had been hired to kill Moose so that he would be unable to testify against Finger Scarnos, Rocky knew that he must hide Bullwinkle where he would be absolutely safe until after the trial. You want me to hide on a what, Rock? Mink farm. I was afraid that's what you said. Knowing a mink farm would be the last place anybody would ever think to look for a moose, our heroes signed on as mink hands at a local minkery. Everything went well until the very day of the trial when Boris and Natasha arrived at the farm. Hokey smoke! Bullwinkle, we gotta hide you! Shoving Bullwinkle into an empty mink pen, Rocky instructed him to act like a mink. Squeak, 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 squeak! Oh, squeak! Hiding in a mink meal barrel, Rocky waited in the darkness for two hours. Then, when all seemed quiet... They must be gone! Phew, that was a close one! But returning to the mink pen, he found that Bullwinkle was also gone. The mink pen is empty! What happened to Bullwinkle? Who's that? Why is this pen empty? Why, well, I sold the mink that was in it. Biggest son of a gun I ever saw. He put up quite a fight, too, but we finally got him into the sack. You... you sold him? Yep, to a little foreign feller in a black suit. Oh, no! Knowing that every second counted, Rocky flashed into the air and followed the tire tracks left by Boris's car in the road below. Before long, he found the car parked at a deserted sawmill and swooped down for a look through the window. Well, honey bun, at last I will keep Moose from testifying against my hero, Finger Scarnos. And you will get Moose Skin Babushka out of the deal at the same time. <laughs> oh, you are such a thoughtful little stinker, Boris, darling. Hokey smoke! Bowwinkle is due to testify right now! How will I ever save him and get him there in time? Time was rapidly running out, and with Bowwinkle only inches away from the cruel saw, Rocky struck upon a bold plan. Sneaking to the phone in the sawmill office, he placed a call. Hello, electric company! This is the sawmill calling. I just thought I'd tell you that I can't pay my electric bill. Everybody knows that when you don't pay your bill, they cut off your electricity. Hey, what happened to the electricity? Maybe we blew a fuse, darling. Come on, we fixed it so we can get back to cutting up moose. Rocky, baby, your timing is perfect. Never mind that. We gotta get you to that trial to testify. Right, let's go. Wait, there's one more thing I gotta do first. Stopping by the phone, Rocky made another call to the electric company. Electric company, this is the sawmill again. I just found out that I can pay my bill after all. Watch, Natasha. Here is a trick I learned in the army. You put penny in fuse box and you get the results right away. Please, Boris, this is no time to be showing off. With Boris busy elsewhere, Rocky and Bullwinkle set off on a dead run for the courthouse. But could they make it in time? Order! Order in the court. Please, Your Honor, can't we wait just a few more minutes? I'm afraid not. Since there is no witness to testify, I'll have to find Finger Scarnos, not... Wait! Who are you? I am the Mooseness. He means witness, Your Honor. Yes, and I am here to testify. He done it. Extra, extra, Moose's hero, Scar Nose and Gang go to Pokey. Read all about it. Yay! You did it, Bullwinkle. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of me, too, for living through the whole thing. And what about the viewers? We're proud of them, too, for living through the whole thing. Don't miss our next adventures of Rocket Chase World and Bullwinkle Moose. Mrs. Heinzelman has been buying the same brand of peanut butter for 10 years. She thinks it's best, but with the labels of the three leading brands hidden, can she pick it out? Which one do you prefer? Hey. So you buy Jeff. Oh. <laughs> do you buy Jeff? No. Why did you pick Jeff? Because it tastes the best. It really did. It tastes like fresh peanut butter. I'll give you a free jar. You can have your regular brand or you can have Jeff. I think I'll take Jeff. You got it. Okay. More and more, choosy mothers choose Jeff. Marshall, Will, and Holly on a routine expedition met the greatest earthquake ever known. High on the rapids, it struck their tiny raft and plunged them down a thousand feet below to the land of the lost. Go. 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 To 
Is uh, anybody thirsty? Uh-oh. I am. Good, good. So am I. Be careful on your way down to the water hole. I knew there was a catch. No, there's two catches, Will. You're going with her. I can take care of myself. Of course you can, honey. But remember, this is still a dangerous place. Okay? Here, I'll take them. Daddy gave them to me. Okay. Hey, let's take the shortcut. Hey, we've never come this way before for water. I told you it's a shortcut. You probably just want to go exploring again. Daddy won't let you unless we all go. Maybe so, but it's still on the way. Let's get out of here. Wow. Looks like an ancient temple. Wonder who built it. I hope they're friendly. Or at least on vacation. Doesn't look inhabited. Look at that! Come here, dog! Wow, that's a big Allosaurus. Boy or girl? Huh? Why? I want to know if we should name it Big Al or Big Alice. Let's not get close enough to find out. Hey, come on. Dad's going to want to know about this. But don't you want to try going inside? There may be a whole city. Well, sure, but i got to watch out for you, and it might be dangerous. Yeah, it is kind of scary, isn't it? I'm not scared. Well, come on. This is close enough. We can signal Dad from here. What are you sending? If you'd practice more, you wouldn't have to ask. I'm telling him about the lost city, of course. He said be careful, didn't he? Hey, I thought you couldn't read Morse code. I can't, but I can read Daddy. What else did he say? He said he'd meet us. Do we wait here? Uh, I know we're supposed to get the water first, and then he'd meet us at the crevasse. Mm, will you carry these for a while? Dad gave them to you. I'll carry them on the way back. Okay, then they'll be heavier with water. <sighs> Last time you heard something, we found a monkey man. He was a Paku. Mm. Hey, look at the footprints. This is funny sand. Dad says it's red because it's oxidizing. Uh, that means it's rusting. I know what it means. But who ever heard of rusty sand? These footprints must be fish. They haven't started to fade yet. 
Hey, they look like Pakuni prints. Maybe it's Chaka. Yeah, and maybe it's Robinson Crusoe. <sighs> you know, I don't think we're going to see Chaka again. Let's follow them and see. Now, wait a minute. It could be dangerous. Well, be careful. I'm supposed to watch out for you. Well, then, what do we do? What we... Well, I mean... Go that way. Well, it's the only way. Yumani Rokasani. Look, another Paco has joined them. Now they're two humans. You know, in fact, these humans wear the same size shoe. Gone in a circle. There's no second Paco. We. We've been following the same tracks. You're wrong, Will. These tracks weren't here before. They are beside the other ones. Come on, let's go. Now, Holly. <laughs> See, I told you they were fresh. And now there are three sets of Pakuni tracks. Hey, we'd better stop before we're outnumbered. Yeah. Hey. Chaka! Okay? Yeah, what about you? Yeah. You know, filling this place with dinosaurs is sure one heck of a way to run a jungle. Yeah, and they don't even run on <sighs> schedule. Phew. Ah. Well, hello, Chaka. I guess he's more afraid of those dinosaurs than of us. <sighs> Friend? Warren. That's close enough. Come on, shake. I guess that's one trick you're never gonna teach him. Yeah. Look. He's still wearing the splint Daddy put on him. I guess he couldn't get it off. You know, Dad's pretty good at those things. Uh -huh. Hey, I'll take it off for him. His legs got to be well by now. Yeah. It's hey, okay no, no, now. Easy, easy Chuck. Easy. easy. I'm not going to hurt you, okay? Friend. Huh? Friend. Easy, easy. Osu. Osu. Is that water? Yeah, I think he means water. Here, I'll okay. give him some. Hey, you keep him busy, huh? Yeah, I know what you mean. Osu. What the? Osu. <laughs> Hey, hey, don't give him too much. That's all we got left. Okay, here. Ah, there you go, Chaka. You're as good as new. <laughs> Come on, Holly, let's go. Yeah. But what about him? Well, I guess he's gonna have to find his own way back. Uh, go on, Chaka. Go home. Okay, let's ignore him. I mean, he's sure he can find his own way. Yeah. Come on, let's go find Dan. Okay, come on. supposed to meet us here? I probably went on the cross. Come on. Come on, Holly. I'm coming. Be, but I'm not. Then where are we? 
I don't know. Oh, I thought so. Well, I know where we are. I, I just don't know where everything else is. Hey, Will, look at this. I wonder who wrote it. Maybe there's somebody else here. Could be. Beware of Slee Stack. Sarisa Taka! Hey, what's wrong with you, Chaka? Sarisa Taka! He's been muttering that for hours. Sarisa Taka! Hey, do you think he could mean Slee Stack? Yo, Sarisa Taka! See, he does mean Slee Stack. Hey, well, that's the way we have to go, but. Hey, wait a minute, Chaka! Hey, Chaka! Hey, Chaka! 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 Come back, Chaka! 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 I don't like this. Maybe we should have gone back with Chaka. But this is the quickest way. I think. Come on. Wira, hurry! Sarisa Taka! Miramara lost anymore. We can find our way out from here. See? Down there's where we first came in. It's spooky. I don't like it here. <sighs> yeah, I wish Dad were here. Come on, let's go find him, huh? Okay. <laughs> what it is. Don't be frightened. Oh, come on, speak up. We're a... Will? We're a... Ari. Holly? Yo, Sarisa Taka. Sarisa Taka? Yo, Sarisa Taka. What's Sarisa Taka? Visa. Visasa. Tusa. Tusasa. Doma. Gosa. Nichi. I don't understand everything you're saying, Chuck, but obviously they're in trouble. Let's go. Will? Yeah? I'm scared. I mean, for real. Mm. No, I really am, Will. Those things are that caught us. I don't know. Hey, maybe it's a, a slee stack. Will! Oh, I'm sorry. It's awake again. Oh, I hope it's not dreaming of lunch. I'm afraid it is. I still don't understand what you mean. Sarisa Taka! Beware of slee stack. Yo, Sarisa Taka! Well, what's a slee stack? Sarisa Taka! Sarisa Taka. Sure, that's easy to figure out. Come on, Chaka. Go on. Wira! Ari! Holly. What? I've been thinking. That's nice. No, no, wake up. Listen what? to me. What? Look at this. 
I bet we could rip this apart. And then what? There's a what's his name down there. Look. What are you doing? Look. If we swing what are you this. Doing? Shh. If we swing this to the edge, we could jump off. You jump. I'm not gonna jump. God, look at how far down that is. Okay, I'll jump. Okay. Now wait. This is quite a place, but uh, I... Yo, yo, where are you? Ari? Osu! 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 About Will and Holly. Sarisa Taka. All right, Sleestack. Uh, let's go. Come on. Ota, many Dina Ota. I'm sorry, Chucka. I don't understand. Ota, Yewo Ota. Oh, fire. Uh, a torch. Tocha. Torch. Okay. Chucka, lead on. Go on. I just want to know what it is. It smells awful. I wish we had a light so we could see what we're afraid of. Hey, you know something? What? You're being awfully brave. That's because I have no room to cry. Sarisa Taka! Sarisa Taka! Let's find Will and Holly first. Chuck, I won't let them get you. We've got to find Will and Holly first. Now, come on. <laughs> so that's a sleister, huh? Whew. Come on.
They're gone. Come on. Get out of here. Come on. Move. Yes. Come on. Wait a minute, Will. Okay. Just hold on. Hang on. Come on. Come on. I'll be glad to see you. Move. Oh, quick. Let's get out of here. Not now, Chuck. Come, come on. Let's go. Come on. Out. Come on. Well, I uh, guess he was trying to say goodbye. Yeah, let's go home. Uh, just a moment. Haven't you uh, forgotten something? Oh, oh no. Dad. That's how we got into this. <sighs> Come on. When I look all around, I can't believe the things I found. Now I need to find my way. I'm lost. I'm lost, find me, living in the land of the lost, living in the land of the lost. <laughs> Hello again, I'm Mrs. Butterworth. Know why folks just love my buttered syrup? Cause it's rich and thick. Now watch, see how long it takes Mrs. Butterworth to drip down this stack? My syrup's got to be thick to pour this slowly. Now watch how fast the leading syrup runs. The truth is, Mrs. Butterworth's is twice as thick as the other syrup. <laughs> oh, I may be a slowpoke pouring, but my taste is sure worth waiting for. H.R. Pop and Step, push your bend when things get rough. H.R. Pop and Step, can't do a little cause you can't do enough. Once upon a summer time, just a dream from yesterday, a boy in his magic golden flute heard a boat from off the bay. Come and play with me, Jimmy, come and play with me, and I will take you on a trip far across the sea. Which you had in mind the flute to snitch From her broom broom in the sky She watched her plans materialize She waved her wand The beautiful boat was gone The skies grew dark The sea grew rough And the boat sailed on and on and on and on and on and on, and on. But Puff and Stuff was watching too And knew exactly what to do He saw the witch's boat attack And as the boy was fighting back He called his rescue racer crew As often they'd rehearsed And off to save the boy they flew But who would get there first? But now the boy had washed ashore Puff arrived to save the day Which made the witch so mad and sore She shook her fist and screamed away Why, that's downright revolutionary. Mr. Mayor, you must do something. These pickets want to steal my candy. I'll talk to them. Hold it, you ants. This is your mayor speaking. Hi, Mayor. When did you get back in town? Tell it like it is, Mayor. We just want to do our own thing. And what is your own thing? Nothing. We want to do nothing. 
No, no. If you do nothing, you get nothing. If you want candy, you must work for it. No one gets anything without working for it. Understand? Oh, I don't know. What, what do you think? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Alarm! Witch's proclamation! Witch's proclamation! Alarm! <laughs> now what? Ooh. Don't worry, Freddy. Maybe it has nothing to do with us. Just the mention of her name sent shivers up my spine. Ooh. Well, stop ringing and read it already. <laughs> Hear ye, hear ye! Let it be known to all residents of Living Island that Jimmy and his golden flute are one but a witch, or else. Or else? Or else! <laughs> Jimmy, I'm scared. We can't wait any longer, Jimmy. We must get you and Freddy off this island immediately. I wonder why the witch was mad at us. We didn't even do anything. Oh, it's not you she wants, Jimmy. It's me. Well, why couldn't I have been just a plain, ordinary wooden flute like all the others? I'm afraid Freddy is right. The witch wants him. I won't give up Freddy, not even if it means my life. If I gave myself up, would the witch let Jimmy go? No chance, Freddy. You're my pal, and we've got to find a way off this island, the two of us. No more talk. Action is what's called for. We must get to Dr. Blinkies and see if he can help us. Hurry, Jimmy, now, hurry. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get together and we're going to pick Ready? Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Of darkness. With my magic wand, of course, you peculiar pigeon. Now we're going to see the real magic around here. <laughs> Please, be careful how you wave that wand around. Well, I'm all warmed up. Here goes a practice try. <laughs> I think I'll make that table float. Watch, Orson. Ooh. <laughs> hmm. Can't understand what went wrong. I've just got to call in a wand repair man. Ooh. Oh, my head. It feels like it's going to pop. Ooh, why me? Oh, why does everything happen to me? The fruit is climbing out of the boy's pocket. Let me see. <gasps> he is climbing out of Jimmy's pocket. How delicious. Now I know I'll get him. Oh, joy. <laughs> I just got to give myself up to the witch to save Jimmy. I just got to. I've just got to. He's entering my forest! I've got him! I've got him! I've got the golden flute! Ooh, no! Stop it, please! All my dances are taken! Oh, stop it! You're making me lose my feathers! Who cares? I'll buy you new ones! Come on, Seymour, let's swing it! He's mine! Oh, mine! Beginning right to the end How lucky, lucky, lucky I am In this whole world of people Who can't get along with people I pick myself a people And what have I got? A jackpot How lucky I am How lucky I am No matter what we do Whether together or far apart Always together inside the heart. Oh, yes, I quite agree. There's no one luckier than you and me. And Freddy makes three. He's gone. Freddy's gone. Oh, fudge. Maybe he fell out of your pocket. If he did, he would have called me. Freddy! Freddy! Let's go back and look for him. Hurry, quick. Excuse me, Mr. Tree, have you seen Freddy? Have you seen Freddy? Excuse me.
me, ma'am. Have you seen Freddy? Well, look who's here. A worm with holes in it. I'm not a worm. I'm a fluke. Okay, so you're a wormy fluke. <laughs> <laughs> Who ever heard of a talking flute? It's a trick. What do you think, Horace? I think that I shall never see a tree that is as mean as me. <laughs> You're a nut. Of course, I'm a nut tree. <laughs> <laughs> Gorgeous leader. Evil trees to gorgeous leader. We read you. What is your command? I want that flute. Grab him. Oh, no, no. Let me go. Oh. Nice work, Elroy. Mission accomplished, oh, gorgeous leader. Well done, trees. Hey, two squirrels out of petty cash. <laughs> now bring him to the castle. That is all. Roger. Witchy poo. Over and out. <laughs> We've searched everywhere, just everywhere. But there's no sign of Freddy. Who? Freddy. Freddy Flute. Who? Freddy! I know that. I'm an owl. That's the way owls think. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jimmy, but I'm afraid there's only one answer. The witch has got him. Well, what are we going to do? Think, Dr. Blanky. Think. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Oh, oh, let's go. Oh, oh, oh. Let's have a little less noise. We're thinking, too. Say, Doc, why don't you use that crazy thing you built? You mean my wheelie bird? Right. Why don't you use it like they do in Charlie Book? Waxy means my story called the Trojan Horse, page 37. Hey, I remember that story. Oh, the good guy sit in a wooden horse. Correct. And when the wooden horse got inside the castle, they all came out and captured the enemy. Nice going, staff. Thanks, everybody. You're, You're welcome, welcome, Dr. Dr. Blakey. Blakey. Let's go. Hurry, hurry. <laughs> I've got to come over and read you some night. Anytime, Mia. <laughs> In person. <laughs> come on. I'll show you what it looks like. It's the most fabulous invention you ever saw. Wait till you see how it works. A cling and clang. What are you doing in there? Come out this instant. It's all right. I let them play in there. I sure hope they didn't break anything. Oh, no. They're nice boys. Say, they can go along and help with the pedaling. Good idea. We need all the help we can get once we get inside the witch's castle. We've got to rescue Freddy. You boys want to rescue Freddy? Do you want to volunteer? You do? Good. They just volunteered. Let's go puff and stuff. Thanks a lot, Dr. Blinky. Goodbye. Bon voyage and happy witch hunting. Good luck. <laughs> oh, oh. All set, start peddling. <laughs> All right. Go, birdie. Charge! Yeah. Just watch where you're going. Remember, you don't have a bird driving license. Bye! Oh, what a wonderful sneeze! Thanks for helping. For that, I owe you one house call. <laughs> Hey, fellas, look at that. What is it? It's a bird on wheels. It's a wheelie bird. What do you think? I think that I shall never see a wheelie bird as pretty as me. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> My word, what a beautiful bird. Ooh. What do we do now? 
I don't know. Just sit and wait, I guess. Get him to lead us into the castle. <laughs> and you do be quiet, and I mean quiet. Hi there, sugar. My, you're a pretty vulture. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, boy, he's getting friendly. What do we do? Shh. We'll have to go along with him. <laughs> <laughs> Say, gorgeous, I've got a great idea. Would you like to come into the castle and see my dominoes? <laughs> oh, you little devil. Or would you prefer a hot game of tiddlywinks? Ooh, I'm with you. How about a little kissy-poo? <laughs> Oh, goodness, you delectable creature. Oh, I love you. You are mine forever. Too good. He's falling in love with us. That's his problem. If we're going to save Freddy, we've got to get into the castle. Come on, let's go inside where it's cozy and warm. <laughs> 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 Oh, he's taking us into the witch's castle. Ooh, isn't it scrumptious? We're in. Now, how do we get rid of our boyfriend? I've got an idea. Well, here we are, my dumpling. How about another little kissy poo? Oh. Ooh! Oh, what a kisser! What a kisser! Oh, 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 squawk! Inside without puff. When I say three, we'll break the door down. One, two. Hold it. Wait a minute. 
I didn't do anything to you fellas. Help me, Jimmy! Help me! You're just another one of the witch's tricks. Let's go, boys. No! 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 <laughs> What you're looking for? Freddy, what are you doing to him? Stop! No my wrath! No my rage! You are now trapped in a cage! <laughs> I bet you! <laughs> you're in my power! All of you! Oh, this has got to make me witch of the year! <laughs> what did we ever do to you? Let us out! What happened? I'm gone for ten minutes and you run out my cage! <laughs> Look closer, you silly sparrow. I not only have the fruit, but I captured the boy, too. Imagine fooling around with love. <laughs> hold it, hold it. I'll take care of you later, you cockamamie Casanova. Where is your fair weather friend Puffin Stuff, eh? He can't help you now. Arson Seymour, take them to the dungeon. No, please wait, Miss Witch. How dare you call me by my first name? <laughs> How dare you? Take them away. <laughs> what happened? My wand. It's gone. Oh, no, it isn't, Witchy Poo. It's right up here. <laughs> you can't do this to me. My magic is gone without my wand. I'll report you to the Witch's Union. <laughs> That's my wand. Give it back. Stop. I order you to stop. Don't point that thing at me, it's loaded. Nice work, Puff and Stuff. Come on out, Jimmy. I've got it covered. <laughs> Puff, she's escaped with Freddy. Stop, stop. Okay, you're asking for it. <laughs> Look what, what you, you did, did, you moron. You split me in two. <laughs> Would you like to try for four? <laughs> you want Freddy? Well, where am I? What happened? We'll tell you later. Let's go. Oh, Clint is crying. Hurry. Look at me. Look at me. What am I supposed to do? I've got an idea. Just pull yourself together. <laughs> I'm two witches. That means you've got twice as much trouble. trouble. Yeah, twice as much trouble. I'll get him. I'll get him. Oh. <laughs> Come on, boys. Hurry. Let's get out of here. Hurry. Together or far apart, always together inside the heart. Oh yes, I quite agree. There's no one luckier than you and me. And Freddy makes three. <laughs> Sure hope so.